Hello, in this module we're going to talk about statistics, graphs, tables, and correlations. So let's get into it. Alright, so some wording to know for statistics. So you're going to have data. This is a collective name for a piece of information. You have quantitative data. So this is measurements such as length, mass, and speed. It provides information about quantities and numbers. So that's a good way to remember quantitative is quantities. Qualitative is information such as colors, scents, tastes, shapes that cannot be measured using numbers. This can also be in scientific research. Qualitative data is usually what people say. If you interview different people, that's the type of data. Discrete data, so information that can be expressed only by a specific value, such as a whole number. An example is population. Continuous data is information such as time and temperature that can be expressed by any value within a given range. Primary data is information that has been collected directly from a survey, investigation, or experiment, such as a questionnaire or the recording of daily temperatures. Primary data that has not been yet organized or analyzed is called raw data. And secondary data is information that has been collected, sorted, and processed by the, by the researcher. Original data is information that can be placed in numerical order, such as age or weight. And nominal data is information that cannot be placed in numerical order, such as names or places. So first thing we're going to look at are some different types of graphs. So a bar graph is uses vertical or horizontal bars on a grid to show changes over time or to compare quantities. So we can see this is a bar graph, all incidents by assignment, and then it has different users and shows their incident count, or it can also be horizontal. So amount of people that have doctoral degrees or professional degrees. So then we have a line graph. So this displays a number of data points plotted on a graph and it's connected with lines. They're often used to show a change over time. So the timeline is on the horizontal axis. So this could be in this case, it's age, but it could be years, it, it's the length of time. The connecting lines show data changes. So this is showing tree circumference change over time. And so it might have all these various points and the lines are connecting the points to show the change over time. So a pictograph is a graph that uses pictures or symbols to show data. The pictograph will have a key to identify what each symbol represents. Generally, each symbol stands for one or more objects. So this is just showing a banana and then that there are four, there are four apples, there's four cherries. It's just showing the data it's collected, but it's using images. So there's also a pie chart. So this is also called a circle graph and it presents data as proportions of a circle or percentages of a whole. So if it's using percentages of a whole, the entire circle would be 100%. So the full pie represents the whole and it's divided into sectors that each represent something that is part of the whole. And numerically, the angle measurements of each sector can be computed by solving the proportion of X over 360, because 360 would be the full way around. You know how like when they say 180, it's like it's, it's half, it's one line. 360 is the whole way around. So this is showing quarter three sales, so novelty items, fragrances, accessories, footwear, clothing, and it's showing the correlating percentage of all sales. And over here, if we wanted to find the angle for swimming, we can see that swimming is 17%. And if we want to go all the way around, we know that that is 360. So 17% of 360 is 17 over 100 times 360 is going to be 61.2 degrees. So that is the angle right here from this line to this line. You may also have 
to calculate a percentage on a pie chart. So you have to look at the graph and be able to calculate the percent of nurses with each degree. To do this, you have to add up all the degrees for the total number of nurses. So we have BSN 350, ADN 50, DNP 25, and MSN 100. So that gives us 525 total nurses. So our ADN nurses are 50 out of 525, which equals 0.095. We multiply this by 100 to get a percentage. So 9.5% of nurses have an ADN. And we just do the exact same thing. So BSN is 350 out of 525. That gives us 0.67. We multiply it by 100. So 67% of the nurses at this hospital have a BSN. MSN are 100 out of 525. So that's going to give us 0 0.19. We multiply it by 100 because, again, we're trying to get a percentage from a decimal. And that's going to give us 19%. And DNP is 25 out of 525, which is 0 0.048 multiplied by 100 is 4.8% of nurses at this hospital have a DNP. So a histogram is a type of bar graph where the data is grouped in intervals. So the frequency or number of times a value occurs in each interval is indicated by the height of the bar. The smaller the intervals, the more detailed the information. So number of points. So the number of times a value occurs. So let's say these are exam scores or something, right? So if people got 0 to 10, they're here. 10 to 20 is here. 20 to 30 here. So what this means is that there were 40 people that scored between a 50 and a 60. And there are 40 people that scored between 60 and a 70. There's like 20... 7, 28 people that score between a 70 and an 80. So this is a histogram. Now it's also showing you a bell curve. And we don't need to get too much into this, but with statistics, you know, this is a bell curve. We'll get into this a little bit, but let's keep moving forward. So a stem and leaf plot outlines a group of data that falls into a range of values. Each piece of data is split into two parts a leaf and a stem. So on the left part is called the stem and on the right part is called the leaf. So we have our stem over here and we have our leaf. Each stem is listed in a column from smallest to largest, so we have smallest to largest, and each leaf that has the common stem is listed in that stem's row from smallest to largest. So we have one, one, two, two, three, four, and it goes up. So key, if we had a six for our stem and a three for our leaf, it would be 63 years old. So what that means is you have a one-year-old, a one-year-old, a two, a two, a three, a four, a four, a four, a four, a five-year-old, an eight-year-old. Then you have a 10-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 10-year-old, an 11, 11, 13, 17, 19, 25, 25, 27, 27, 28, 28, 29, 29, and so on. So then we have a scatter plot, and these are useful for knowing the types of functions that are given with the data. So they're helpful for finding the simple regression. A simple regression is a regression that uses an independent variable. So a regression is a chart that is used to predict future events. A linear scatter plot may be positive or negative. So let's look at it. We have a scatter plot. Right, if it is a positive correlation, so say that chest and length, if there was a, a positive correlation, the data would look like this. You can see it's increasing. If it had a negative correlation, you would see the plots are decreasing. As this gets bigger, this gets smaller. And no correlation, all of the points would kind of be scattered in an equal way. So a table. A table presents data arranged in rows and columns. So here is our, our table. But a table can have all, all kind of different data, but this is just an example. You've got rows and you've got columns. So a legend explains the data used in the graph. So here is our graphic. And this is our legend. So the, this is just a lot of stuff's going on. But if we look, we know that a tan is the amount of microphones. So we can see the tan. And then 
we know that the purple is an inkjet head. So this must be yeah, revenue and what they sold. So we can see all the different things that they sold. And if we want to know what color something is, like say we want to know what the red is, we can come over to our legend and we can see the red is RF Mems. I don't know what that is, but that's what accounts for this red. So interpretation graph. So you'll see words like equal, is equal to, is, was, were, will be, yields is the same as amounts to and become. So is greater than, is more than. So we kind of went over this in another part, but this is talking about with graphs. So we remember if something is greater than or is more than, we have our alligator pointing towards the bigger thing. So it's pointing towards what is greater. It's greater than or equal to, you get that equal to sign is less than our alligators pointing away from it to the other bigger number because our less than's on this side. It's fewer than and same is less than or equal to is at most is no more than you get that equal sign with the less than sign. Okay, so evaluating information. So the mean is the average value of the data and it gives an idea of a typical value. So to calculate the mean, you're gonna add up all the data points and divide it by the number of points. So that's down here, the mean. The mean is the total number of all the values divided by the number of values. So say you have 10 values, you're gonna add them all up and you're gonna divide by 10 and that's gonna be your mean. If you wanna find the median, this is the middle value in a set of data. If the value at which half the data points are above and half are below. To find the median, put the data in order from smallest to largest and pick the center data point. If there's two points, add them together and divide by two. So say you had those 10 sets of points, you're gonna add them up, you're going to list them out from smallest to largest, and you're gonna find the two middle points. So you knock off the lowest, you knock off the highest, and you keep going in. If you have 10 points, that means you're gonna have two middle points. Right? You're going to be left with two data points. So what you're going to do is add them together and divide by two, and then that will be your median. So right here, the median is the middle number in a list of numbers ordered from lowest to highest. Then the mode. The way I like to remember mode is it's spelled M-O-D-E. So M-O stands for most often. So this is the value that you see the most often in the data set. So say you have 10 data points and they're most of them are different except that you have three that are the exact same say all three are the number seven well that's going to be your mode because it's listed three times and no other number is listed three times and the range of a distribution is the difference between the highest and lowest value so again you have those 10 points you take your highest and lowest value and you find the difference, so you subtract them, and that's gonna be your range. So now we're going to evaluate information in graphs. So if we look at this graph, we have a bar graph, and this is an example of a problem that you will see on the T's. They'll give you a bar graph, and they'll ask you to interpret the data from it. So you're caring for six patients, Miss Blue, Miss Green, Mr. Red, Miss White, Mr. Black, and Miss Gray. With the following ages, use the graph to find the ages of the patients. So we can see Miss Blue is 25 years old. Miss Green is 52 years old. Mr. Red is 41. Miss White is 36. Mr. Black is going to be 39 because we can see this line is 40 and it's a little bit below and Miss Gray is 23. And that is how you would interpret those numbers from a bar graph. And you will most likely see a question like this on the ATITs. So again, those were the answers. And those are the answers. So correlating two values. So we kind of talked about this when we touched on histograms, but bivariate data from two different variables. So you're gonna have an independent variable which is not affected by other variables you're measuring. And you're gonna have a dependent variable which is affected by changes to the independent variable. 
And we go over this also in the ATIT 7 science course, different variables and experiments. And so, yes. So the correlation is the changes between the two variables. So you do scientific research. You're looking at an independent variable and how it affects a dependent variable. And the correlation is when you're calculating different statistics and measuring data for your data. A correlation is the change you find between the two variables. So if both variables increase, there's a positive correlation. The variables are directly related. If one variable decreases and the other increases, there is a negative correlation and the variables are inversely related. In graphing two variables, the independent variable is plotted on the x-axis, so remember that's the horizontal, and the dependent variable is plotted on the y, so the up and down. So let's talk quickly about a data distribution. So a unimodal data distribution has one clear peak of value. So remember our histogram right here? This is a unimodal. Then there's something called a bimodal distribution. And the way you can remember this is bi means two. So this has two peaks, so that's bimodal. There's also uniformity, and a uniformity distribution is a distribution in which there's no distinct peak. So think uniform, everything's the same. There's no distinct peak, these are all kind of the same. Then multimodal, you're gonna have multiple different peaks in your histograms. All right, and symmetry and skewness. So again, we have, so symmetry and skewness. So symmetry is a characteristic of the shape of plotted data. It refers to how well the data on one side of the median mirrors the data on the other side. A skewed data set is one that has a distinctly longer or flatter tail on one side of the peak than the other. A data set that's skewed less has more of its values to the left of the peak, and a set that is skewed right has more of values to the right of the peak. So we can see, here's our histogram. You can see our histogram here. Our mean is right in the center, and this means that our mode, median, and mean are all the same. And this is a perfect skewness for a histogram. Now, let's say our data is negatively skewed. So what that means is it's got a long tail and then, and then it lifts up and over, right? So like on the left side, it is longer. So this is called skewed left because the left side's longer. So it's skewed left. And this is negative. And the reason this happens is because your mean's here, but your median's here and your mode's here. So our data is skewed. If it's skewed right, it has the long tail to the right, and this is positive. And that's because, again, we have our mode, our median, and our mean. They're not all lined up like this nice one up here. The data is skewed. So just something to keep in mind. All right, and that is the end of this discussion. So make sure to do your worksheets, check them with the answer keys, do your quiz, and I'll see you in the next module. Bye.